Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. We're actually gonna be maintaining Burn Peak, doing a few little maintenance tasks, and they're not the things that you would think of. We're always working on the trails, we're always cleaning up the garage. There are just a few things that I only have to do once a year, once every two years, and we're gonna take care of them today, and we're gonna start in the shop with a bug zapper. Uh, it's been since uh, probably last fall that I have emptied this and it's getting grody. Let's go see what our catch was this year. Yeah, this is a pretty good harvest. Mm, nasty. So these guys right here, these are hornets. Whoa, he's really stuck on there. Very plentiful around here. We got stink bugs. Uh, this stink bug is still kicking. And then of course moths, which for the most part, get vaporized, and it smells terrible. I'm just gonna try and clean it out with this thing. Ugh. Inside a garage, this is like the most useful thing ever because you close those doors, and I'm telling you, it's a ghost town in the morning. It'll live on to do another year of uh, wonderful maintenance in my garage. All right. Get the supplies for the next task. All right, Oscar. Ah, he knows that when he has his tactical harness on, he knows we're gonna do stuff. So why do I have all this stuff? Well, come with me and I'll show you. So we've built a number of wooden things here on Burn Peak and what type of wood they're screwed into kind of varies. And I've noticed a few loose planks up on the snake pit skinny. Now, originally when we did that, we screwed them in with two and a half inch screws. Those are very small. We really have to go deeper into the timber here, especially as it starts to rot away. So I have three and a half inch screws here. Uh, I think we're gonna have to replace quite a few of these, but we're gonna go plank by plank and just assess this. Actually, nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be underneath here. There are a couple of rotted parts. There are a couple of soft spots, but we just kind of screwed into some bad areas. So we're gonna go deeper into this timber with a longer screw. Ooh, that really bit. Any plank that's a little bit loose, if we do that to it, it's gonna be here for years to come. It's actually pretty remarkable how well this thing has held up. I say we can get another two years out of this. This landing is solid as can be, but that's not surprising. We built it out of treated wood and black locust, so there's not much that's gonna happen to it. Okay, one loose plank on the driveway jump, and I'm embarrassed to say, seems like the screw snapped. There's nothing underneath this. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing holding it in. Oh yeah, yeah, rest of this is perfect. Uh, that probably happened when I was building and I didn't even notice it. Let's go over to the airbag jump. That's gonna be interesting. That one I know needs some maintenance. So this is a chance for me to indulge and geek out about some of the hardware here because I do get questions. I've decided that a two and a half inch screw is really not enough. We've largely switched to using three inch fasteners for almost everything here. What's weird here is both screw heads have just snapped. Oh, yep, snapped screw head. That's happening a lot. Anytime I see one of those boards, I'm finding snapped screw heads. So this is very concerning. One way that I would prevent this from happening in the future is make sure they're spaced out. So I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna angle this in towards a different part of the wood. We learned something today. You always have to space these planks out a little bit or you're not making any room for movement. And if there's no room for movement, something's gotta go. So although the whale tail is a season newer, we space the planks out, and so it's gonna be interesting to see if we have the same problems, and it doesn't look to be the case. Everything is perfect. Plenty of space for water to come through and for it to dry. I don't see anything loose on the whale tail, and that's remarkable given that we found like 10 snapped screw heads on the airbag lip. For whatever reason, Kevin Jump, good to go. 
there's nothing loose on this thing. So let's go down to Elmer Fudd. I know there's some loose ones on Elmer Fudd. I use a lot of three inch screws on this and so most of them are pretty good, but this one right here is not. Take your bets, is the head snapped off or did it rot inside the wood? We have a full on three inch screw, but these planks are really, really thick. And so there's not as much of this screw biting as you might think. So it's filthy underneath this plank, but it's not rotten. This is in really good shape actually. So that three inch screw might not have been long enough with the abuse that this took. I'm gonna go and do a full four, get brand new holes, and we're gonna use the three and a half inch hardware. I think we're gonna be fine. Keep working our way down. We're gonna have to do a good job of keeping the spaces in between these a little more clear. And I think we can get another few years out of it easy. So here at the end of the Elmer Fudd Skinny, not only does the timber get really narrow, but I have to do this turn. And so these are cantilevering off the side really far. And at the time I knew that could present a problem. And so I used timber locks in them and they are just, super strong. Um, they haven't loosened up the slightest bit, even with bikes slamming on the end here. And so in the future, I may actually use timber locks to hold down planks more often. Use one timber lock as opposed to like six screws. Really happy with how this turned out with the timber locks. I mean, none of these need any additional reinforcement. All right. I feel really good about the Elmer Flood Bridge. There's another thing we have to do up by the trailer. And here we are sitting on the ground in the gravel right next to our trusty trailer. This thing puts in a lot of work and it's important to keep your trailer greased. You can get to it right here, right at the end of the wheel. So we just have to pop this little cover off. This is the number one way to prevent your trailer bearings from exploding on the highway. I mean, I see all sorts of crazy trailer stuff. I see people with like $17 tires with like $40,000 UTVs going down the highway at 60 miles an hour. Save money on your trailer, that's a great idea. So another safety precaution, always grease your wheelbarrow bearings because you could be going really fast with this thing, carrying some rocks and the bearings will just explode and rocks will go everywhere. And so I'm gonna show you how to I'm just kidding, you don't grease the wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow stays like this forever. There's no grease points on your wheelbarrow. So another thing that we haven't gotten around to, I have been saving this box of stuff, Fuker pedals. Here's the Chester pedal. Here's an old cassette of mine. This came off of Kevin's bike, remember during the repair video? Here's the rotor that he messed up, the one that was off of my dirt jumper. You guys remember that? So. We have a number of things in here and we're gonna make a little display for the ranger station so we can put it up on the wall and people that go there can see things that have actually been in the videos and that's kind of cool. So we're gonna start by choosing a piece of wood over there in our pile. God, these are long enough. Mother, I just figured this was gonna be big enough to just boop. The hell am I gonna do now? So for the giant beagle cog, which is made of steel, I'm just putting magnets on here because there might come a day that I wanna to go to the ranger station, grab it, and actually use it. So for the other stuff, I'm using hardware from our parts bin, like disc brake bolts and water bottle bolts and things that are gonna kinda of stand out as bike parts. For the pedals, I think I'm just gonna remove one pin from each of them and put a drywall screw in just to hold it in place. We've left the finish of this kind of janky just to give it sort of a rustic look. <laughs> look at that. And we have ourselves a nice little art display for the Burn Peak Ranger Station. So I'm really proud of this thing. We've got guests in the house for the next few days, so we won't be able to hang it just yet. But I hope you enjoyed us doing some chores around Burn Peak. 
I, for one, learned a thing or two by inspecting all those features. For one, we should probably be using longer screws when uh, the mounting surface is suspect, but also we should be always ensuring that the planks have some space between each other because it was so clear that when you put them right next to each other, the expansion and contraction and just general movement of the feature will actually crack the heads of the screws loose. And that's something we don't want to happen in the future. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you feel a little bit better about the safety of these features now that we gave them a once over. And thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time. Okay. I feel like I just screw it into the wall so nothing could ever happen to it. <laughs> it's pretty locked in now. Yeah, now it's part of the house. Don't take the beagle ring. It looks good. Fits well there. <laughs>